Hey guys, welcome back, glad you're here. When I started out with these videos, my goal was to complete this in a three year period. Uh, but as I'm going along, I'm, I'm realizing that there's gonna be moments where you know I might get an illness, um, spend some time with the family, the holidays come up, where you know rather than finishing uh, the whole thing in three years, it might take me three years and three months, three years and six months. And I realize in the grand scheme of things, that's not a big deal, that there might be a day or two or a week here and there uh, where I push pause. And that's fine because some chapters take a lot more homework than others and uh, I wanna do it right. And so I wanted to give you the heads up that uh, this will be my last video until Tuesday, uh, September 10th. So hope you can join me back then. I'm gonna take a little time with the family and just wanted to give you guys a heads up. So thank you very much. I know you'll understand. All right, verse one. Now about that time, Herod the king laid hands on some, some who belonged to the church in order to mistreat them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people. So Peter was kept in, pri in the prison, but uh, prayer for him was being made fervently by the church uh, to God. And we can definitely take note of the power of prayer here. On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and guards in front of the door were watching over the, uh, the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter's side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly. And his chains uh, fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself, uh, means like pull up your, your gown, and put, put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow. And he did not know that what was being done by, uh, by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself. And they went out and went along one street. And immediately the angel departed from him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. When he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter was standing in front of the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. They kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had led, led him out of the prison. And he said, report these things to James and the brethren. Then he left and went to another place. Now when day came, there was no small disturbance among the soldiers as to what could have become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and had not found him, he examined the guards and ordered that they be led away to execution, which really stinks for them. Uh, then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and was spending time there. Now he was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and with one accord they came to him, and having won over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they were asking for peace, because their country was fed by the king's country. On an appointed day, Herod, having put on his royal apparel, took his seat on the rostrum and began delivering an address to them. The people kept crying out, the voice of a god and not a man. And immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, uh, Herod, because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and died. So what's up now, Herod? But the word of the Lord continued to grow and to be multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their mission, taking along with them John, who was also called Mark. 
All right, guys, that'll do it for this day. And uh, again, I'll be seeing you soon, taking a little time, and I'll be back quickly and hope, hope you'll be with me as well. Be safe. I'll be praying for you. God bless you. Take care.